Welcome to the Omnibus Show, a program for people who are interested in everything, with deep conversations on a wide variety of subjects. And now your host, Dave Gibbs. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Omnibus Show, the program for people who are interested in everything, with deep conversations on a wide variety of subjects. This episode's guest is Cynthia Collins actor and the co-founder of Actors Theatre of Indiana. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you Thank here today. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm, happy to um, be here. I love live theater, and you just have so much to share. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> But um, going right at it, yeah, sure. what, what, um, what drew you in? What was that moment that 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 really got your heart got me for, for for life? Yeah, theater. got me hooked for yeah. life. For life. <laughs> for life. For yeah, life, right? you became a life. I uh, became a lifer. Um, I, I my earliest memory was uh, when I was five years old. Actually, I grew up in New Jersey, and uh, the Paper Mill Playhouse is the State Theater of mm-hmm. New Jersey in Milburn, uh, right next door to Livingston, where I grew up. And uh, when I was five, my parents and I went to see The Man of La Mancha. Um, it had already been on Broadway. It already, you know, had its Broadway run. And now it was uh, out in the regional theaters. And um, my mother was friends with, with one of the uh, actors who mm-hmm. was in the show, a Margaret Coleman, as a matter of fact. So um, my mother was a longtime subscriber to Paper Mill. She started, she was had been going and seeing shows there since she was a teenager. So, of course, I grew up seeing shows there, along with, you know, of course, going into the city, New York, and seeing all the Broadway shows. But it really stuck with me. Um, It was fascinating. First thing, it's a fantastic show. Um, Fascinating to me as a five-year-old, and still to this day. It's one of my favorite, favorite shows. Mm -hmm. So I was hooked as a five-year-old. I was just like, this is so cool. You know, and of course, my parents had the Broadway cast recording. So when we got home, we put it on, you know, and I was incessantly listened to it, uh, you know, and ju- jumped around, and was running around like an idiot around the room, you know, every time I listened to the album. And um, I grew up uh, just loving that show and still to this day, loving that score <laughs> and the story of Don Quixote. And um, yeah, it's, it's just it really stuck with me. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. We're, we're um, cause I, it's, it's like back to my, my notion of you learn people by their books and their music. Right. Said, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. if we were to, to look at your DVDs of, <laughs> of live theater, if I can use that illustration, sure, sure. um, <clears throat> what would have been some actors or actresses that was really, who, who really, um, um, influenced you? Um, you know, it, 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 as we were, you know, because we were talking about Diana Rigg before, you mm-hmm. know, we were discussing Diana Rigg, and you watched the Avengers, and I watched the Avengers as a kid, and that show really stuck with me as well because Diana Rigg playing Emma Peel was probably the coolest chick she was on the face of I the planet. I think she still is. I mean, she was just so cool, and she wore those tight leather suits, and they zipped up the front. She had those cool boots on, and and um, and she could beat the you know what, out of a guy, like you said, yeah. you know, she, she was, this, <laughs> she, she was at all. She, she had was, it all. Oh God, she's gorgeous, you know, and it's a beautiful woman, but that could, that was, that was independent and, and, and just kind of eccentric. And, um, so but I, very feminine and well-styled. Exactly. And exactly. Had a great sense of style, but mm-hmm. could, could defend herself. Right. Exactly. Um, smart as a whip. So that was, um, yeah, being, Seeing that as a kid again, um, young like that, that really that really made a mark on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. then, uh, and then as I I got older, uh, I would watch the Carol Burnett show every Saturday night. Fabulous. Um, <clears throat> every Saturday night that she was on, and I'd watch it with uh, my grandmother because my parents would go out. You know, my parents were very social people, so either they were having a party or they they'd be out somewhere, and I'd go. My grandmother lived with us. She mm-hmm. lived with us. And um, and I'd go up to her room. You know, she had a TV in her room. So we'd go up and we'd watch it. Some of my very favorite memories, you know. Yeah. She she was so versatile. She was incredible. Uh, Nobody could was, do what she did. Exactly. Nobody still, can, in my opinion, can do what yeah. what she did and, and her physical comedy and, and just her quick, 
uh, her just quick wit and her uh, quick thinking. I mean, who opened a show talking to the audience? Nobody did that. She did it. Off the mm-hmm. cuff. Ask me a question. And she made it, always made it interesting, always made it funny, always could spin, spin on it. You know, um, she just was the, she was, she was a part of the people. Mm-hmm. People felt, felt that she was, a, a, you know, one of, one of everybody. You know, she was one of everybody. She's every woman. Exactly. You know? Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. That's quite a, yeah. that's quite a, com- that's a strong combination of influences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Now, <clears throat> You you have a very um, strong, wide uh, experience well, growing kind, up in theater. You're kind, kind to say that. Yeah, well, I mean, nice you've done say, a lot, you know, well, and so and when you're in theater, you you, you just you do a lot of theater, um, and um, you tell us about your from education to theater. Hmm. So um, I'm a native of New Jersey, so I grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right across, right, very close to New York City, the mm-hmm. city. Um, so as a kid, you know, going and seeing my mother would take me to all the shows. Uh, you know, um, my parents were very, my mother sang, you know, and she dabbled in community theater. So I was surrounded by it growing up. I was surrounded by music in the house. Uh, my dad played the piano, <laughs> well, self-taught, and so he'd kind of get on there and, da, 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 you know. I tried that too. Yeah. My mom bought us a, a family piano. Yeah, and we had a huge, um, we had a huge Steinway upright. Wow. Uh, my brother has it now. It's a beast. It's you know weighs about five tons. They're huge. Uh, huge. But my parents at all their parties would always have music and there'd always be somebody on that piano and then there's always, you know, be sing-alongs and, That's so and, uh, Oh, so much fun. Uh, and so I was influenced by all that, of course. And then, um, I started getting involved in theater in junior high. I had a teacher, Paul Stephanie, who wrote shows for us. He would write them. Wow. Original. He would write them. He'd kind of take his ideas oh, I see. from certain things and, you know, switch some things around, but all the music was original. He wrote, he would write the entire score Wow! to a musical. And, um, so that's when I started to really get interested. I was always interested in theater. I always, I think, like I was saying, I think it's in your DNA Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's just in you when you go into this business, you have to have it in you. And, um, so I, I started to get involved and then high school, of course, I, I was in show choir. I was in the musicals. I was in some of the plays. I was just, it was a natural path for me Mm -hmm. that I just had no doubt I was going to go into this profession. There was never a doubt in my mind. I just, it was just like I said, it was just like a natural path that I followed. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I went to school. I went to uh, Ohio University, actually, for Mm -hmm. theater, a BFA in theater there. Nice. And then got out of there, uh, you know, around your, you know, while you're in school, and everybody's different. Everybody has their different way of going about things. I was, um, while I was in university, um, I was, uh, you know, you, you immediately start, you know, after like, like I was in like my junior year, you start looking for work. You start, you, you start, oh, sure. you know, you got to work when you get out of school. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't wait. <clears throat> so I would. The summer stock. So I was doing summer, right. I was doing summer, summer stock between my junior and senior year. Senior year, I was going to all of the auditions you know, all of the mass auditions that there were for college students Mm -hmm. and landed a, landed a a job of, you know, had my contract signed before I graduated. So I was, so I was, you know, I was, I was set. Um, and then went on to work, um, at a theater company in Columbus, Ohio. I was like, um, called Players Theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are no longer in existence, but, uh, that was my first job. Amazing. Yeah. I was there the whole season. As a non-union performer. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That came with time. <clears throat> yes, yes. And so you moved on. I just kept York. auditioning, came back home. <clears throat> I was there for that season, came back home to the city, did an off-Broadway show uh, right after that. Um, just <laughs> just you, kept continuing. Just kept going Just on. kept going. You just keep going. Do you, do you, you have know? a favorite show from those years that you were performed in? Um Something that really, and that's a question that performers get a lot. You know, yeah. what's your favorite? Role? What's your favorite? What was your favorite role? What was your favorite show? And there's no favorite for me. Um, I have enjoyed playing 
certain roles more than other roles, of course. Um, but I, I just think that every single show you do and every role you play brings something to you and teaches you something. Sure. You're constantly learning in this profession, constantly learning um, how to better yourself, not just as a performer, but as an individual. The theater teaches us that. Um, well, let me uh, rephrase you know, that. You know, so, what, what would have been a part that in, in, your, in your coming up through theater yeah. that stretched you the most? Um, I'd have to say, uh, well, I'll tell you, when I first did, this was, and this is, this is, this is years back, um, when I did, uh, I did charity and sweet charity, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't think about ever doing that role. Okay, but but uh, I was doing another show at this particular theater company, and uh, I knew they were going to be doing their next season. They were going to be doing Sweet Charity, mm -hmm. and the people I was working with, the other actors, are like Collins. You you need to you need to talk to the artistic director. It was Roy Hine at the time. Um, you need to talk to Roy about doing Charity, you know. And I was like, Oh God, no! I can't. do what? You know? And they're like, Oh God, yes. Uh, so I, I did, <laughs> and he gave me the part. And so I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta work my, you know, I gotta, you know, I, this is, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. She hardly ever leaves the stage, you know, um, <clears throat> all those lines you have to remember. Uh, well, that's, and that's nothing. That's, that's part of the bit. That's, that's, <clears throat> that's part of the, it goes with the territory. Right. But, um, it's a heavy, heavy dance role. And, and I am a dancer, but it is a heavy dance role. So, um, so I, I was like, yeah, I, you know, I got to be on it. I got to really, you know. And so that was a wonderfully challenging, wonderful experience for me, playing that role. I was 31 when I played it. Um, and so that was just really, um, like I said, it was really... It really, I thought, okay, now, you know, it really stretched me. Mm -hmm. And you want roles that will stretch you. You want roles that you're like, can I do that? You know, can I do it? Yeah, I think I can. I did Fun Home here a few years ago at the Phoenix Theater. Mm -hmm. And I played uh, Allison Bechtel. And that was another one where I was like, oh, I wonder if I can play that role. My partner, Judy, she's like, of course you can play it. Go to the audition. And I did, and I buzzed my hair, and I colored my hair, and, and did everything. You know, I went, whole, I went all out. I went all out, you know? And um, because that's what you kind of, that's what I do. I do, you know, if I'm going to go do something, I'm, go I'm doing out. it, you know? I'm going, I'm going all out. And I did, and I got the role, and that was another wonderful, excellent production that Phoenix did. Mm -hmm. um, cast was great, mm -hmm. and that was, a, that, was a, another, that was a very, that was a challenging role mm -hmm. uh, as well. But if you don't challenge yourself, then you're going to stay stagnant, mm -hmm. and you're not going to do anything. You're going to sit. You're not going to. You're not going to move forward in your career. Yeah, you know? it's really <clears throat> the dynamic of yeah. live theater, isn't it? Oh, it's there's nothing like it. Yeah. Are there any um, all those people through time? Um, any um, actors or actresses that you would point to that you had? Uh, <clears throat> that you really enjoyed being with on stage? Um, I've enjoyed, mm -hmm. I'll tell you the people I've enjoyed the most are, and if you're talking about just... In, in the moment in, where you acted with them, yeah. that it really had chemistry. Um, I, <clears throat> I, 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 I've been very fortunate to, very fortunate to work with some wonderful actors. Um, you know, there are so many good actors in this country mm -hmm. and <clears throat> that, you know, the, the, the regular general public, they don't know. Sure. You know, they don't know them. Um, and there, there are so many good people, so many, that, that people, do, like I said, because they're not, um, because they don't see them. You right. Know, they don't see them. They don't, You're not going to all the regional theaters. <clears throat> you don't see them on TV. You, you, right. That. You don't see them on TV. Uh, mm. Newspaper. Uh, right. You, you, you know, there's so many good actors. Or I should say and, the internet, no. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that of... Uh, and, and I feel that I've had m m more uh, good experiences, of course. I've been very fortunate than, than not so. So, I've, sure. so I've, I've had almost, you know, good chemistry with almost 
everybody I've worked okay. with. There is um, a very uh, good friend of mine, uh, uh, my dear friend, Billy Kimmel, who is, um, comes and directs. He directs for Actors Theatre of Indiana once mm-hmm. in a while. He will be back actually directing Forbidden Broadway, the last show of the season, because he did that show in New York for years. Okay. Um, he's one of my closest and dearest friends. We went to school together. So we started acting together in college. He's one where I just know when we're on stage together, we're, we're good. We're golden. You, we're golden. We're golden. You, there, you we have are simpatico. We are golden. We've got that there's no, same mind, or you're on the same there's line. No, right. There's no work. I mean, mm-hmm. we just go, right? Um, uh, being in the company, I will say this, and when the three of Judy Fitzgerald and Don Farrell and I started the company, um, I will say that because this is 19th season, and I, and even though all those years we had that same thing, look, we got to do this. And we just got on stage and it was like, there was no problem. There was no thinking. Yeah. We just did it. Yeah. You know, we just, we, there, we just, we just went. And, um, so there was no, you know, you, th- you start to think too much and, and you're in trouble, yeah, <laughs> you know? That's true. Um, but it's, th- it's, yeah, it's, it's things like that, that you just, you know, you, there's just a, a natural, it just naturally happens. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there have been some people where, yeah, you know, the chemistry, but you have to do your job. Mm-hmm. You have to do your job and, you, and that is your job. And that is, that is your responsibility to um, make the audience think that you do have that chemistry. Yes. You know, no, yeah, and it, it's, it, that's part of what you have to do. And you might not feel it all the time. You know, that doesn't mean that person wasn't good. Mm-hmm. doesn't mean they're not a good actor. It just means... You don't have that that sync that chemistry that sync together, but yeah. you better but you better work at it. You better make it so, yes. you know, for that audience. Well, to to conclude the chapter, um, also <clears throat> I've talked I've asked you about programs or, or theater shows that really influenced you. Um, is there a particular show of of all of your time <laughs> on stage, which is just like, do you have a particular favorite? Um. Well, I have to say anything that... That you've um, acted in. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'd say Kander and Ebb or John Kander and Fred Ebb are, are my favorite my favorite uh, composer lyricist team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wrote Chicago, um, Cabaret, uh, you know, it goes on and on. Floor of the Red Menace, Zorba, uh, you know, uh, the, the Rink, Kiss of the Spider Woman, right? So in saying... In staying with that, um, any of their shows, I've, I've done Cabaret, I've done Chicago. Um, well, those are two of my favorite shows, and, okay. and, and two of my favorite shows that, that I have done, ever okay. done. Um, and, and also, that's also Bob Fosse choreographed those. Bob Fosse also choreographs Street Charity. So all of that choreography, and i was been lucky enough in those shows. The very physical... That, well, it's the Fosse choreography, yeah. and it's a very different type of choreography. He was his own person. He he came up with, you know, he was brilliant, and uh, you know, he was in. in I, I don't want to get off track too much about Bob Fosse, but but his choreography was was extremely different, mm-hmm. and you moved your body, you move your body in an extremely different, non traditional way, and that's why I like it. Mm-hmm. So all of those shows m- mean a lot to me not only because of the challenge of that choreography, but the beauty of it. And I, 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 the, the, within that choreography, within my body, I, I love it. You know, I love it. So, and along with the, you know, with Kander and Ebb, their, their music is, I, I adore singing their, their, their music, Mm -hmm. their creation. I, I just adore it, you know? So there you have it. But well, we're going to take a brief break right now, and we'll be back with Chapter 2 of The Omnibus Show. Hello and welcome back to Chapter 2 of The Omnibus Show. This week's guest is Cynthia Collins, actor and co-founder of the Actors Theatre of Indiana. And now we're going to talk about ATI. Oh, all right. Now, um, <laughs> you, you, you co-founder, and yeah. can you tell us about how you created that? So, um, 
the company was established in 2005, incorporated in 2005. Uh, myself, Judy Fitzgerald, and Don Farrell, three actors uh, living and working in New York. Uh, we knew each other. We had worked together uh, in the past. And we uh, had started to work at a theater down in Atlanta, Georgia Ensemble Theater. And what came about was that uh, they actually started hiring the three of us to do their spring musical. They didn't do a lot of musicals, okay? And they had known Don because Don grew up there where the theater mm -hmm. it was. It's in Roswell, Georgia, and Don grew up there, so they knew him. Uh, the artistic directors knew Don. So they're like, well, why don't you come down and you can do our, our spring musical? So we'd all be in it. Um, so it's crazy. We'd all be in the show. Don would, would direct. I would choreograph, you know, so we, you know, so I was getting my, my chops with choreography. You know, I, I was, I was, I was, uh, you know, that was another thing that I had started to get into to, to, you know, kind of learn you how were to doing your learn Cynthia how to Fossil. learn how to choreograph and not, not, not <laughs> in those shows, but learn how to, you know, another thing that I wanted to learn yeah. in our business, you know, the more you learn, the more you work. That's what mm -hmm. I said to you before, the more, exactly. you know, the more you work. So, um, so we were doing their spring musicals and then it was for a few seasons. And then I, I think it, were, it was like, well, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can start a theater company as mm -hmm. crazy as that sounds to this day. Uh, and so we're like, okay, where are we going to go, right? I'm like, I don't know. I live here. I'm from the East, you know? And Don's like from Atlanta, you know, Georgia. And Judy Fitzgerald is a native of Indiana. She's like, let's go to Indiana. They need more theater there. There needs to be more live theater there. My family's there. They can help us. And so I was like, okay, fine. Who knew I would ever be permanently living in Indiana. I had worked here at theater companies, you know, of course, because you work all over the, the country as an actor. But um, I was like, okay. So we made the leap. Uh, Judy, uh, through a connection with her family, mm -hmm. a gentleman named Jim Briggs, who was a very, very good friend uh, of Judy's parents, uh, knew Mayor Brainerd. Had a friend who was close with Jim Brainerd. And so... I was still back in New York. I was still back in the city uh, doing a, a show. And Judy and Don were here. And they met with Mayor Brainerd. They were introduced to him, met with him, had a great conversation with him. And he said, hey, listen, I'm building a new performing arts center in a few years. This was in 2005, mind you. Sure. Would you like to come and be the professional theater company there, the professional resident theater company there? So, of course, they said, yes, of course we do. So, um, so... <laughs> That's how it all started. So I get here in 2005, and we just start. Our first season was at, the, was at Zionsville Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. It's in Zionsville, the Zionsville High School. We had a couple of seasons there. We just, we just started. We just, we just dove in. We were actors. We had a hell of a lot to learn about the other side of the table. We did everything. We had to. Judy set up the box office. Not an easy task. Don was directing. I was choreographing. We were in the shows. You know, not conducive. I don't, you know, not, not really conducive for a show. But we had to. You know, we had, we had very little money. Mm -hmm. All of our parents had given us some startup money. Sure. Okay? Um, but that's it. That's all we had. So we just hit the ground running. Uh, you know, we just learned it was like just right into the fire and somehow we, we did it. You know, we just, we just did it. You just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you just have to keep going. Then we were at Pike Performing Arts Center because the center here wasn't built, you understand. Right. So we were waiting. So mm -hmm. we had no home. We were at the Athenaeum. We were at the Indiana Historical Society. We were at Oak Hill Mansion here in Carmel. Bob mm -hmm. and Jennifer Zare, his daughter Jennifer Zare, were extremely helpful to us in those early years. And they said, why don't you come do some, do some cabarets here, do some stuff here. We did. Um, uh, and then, <clears throat> finally, this place was built. Uh, the center was finished in 2011. Uh, we did Chicago. It was the first show we opened the theater with. 
and it was fantastic. It was great. It was, and, and there were no dressing rooms. The, the building wasn't finished. Mm-hmm. So the, there was the theater. Sure. And the lobby. <laughs> and, and then the rest of the building Construction was still around. being built, right? Yeah, yeah. You walk, the doors you walk out of now where the, where the dressing rooms are, there was nothing. Gravel. So we're like, okay. So we made makeshift dressing rooms up in a conference room upstairs. Mm-hmm. It was, it was like when you do things like that. Early it's, days. It's really special. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> um, we were all in the dressing room, you know, it was tight and, uh, the cast was wonderful. And, um, so that's how it started out. Finally, everything was built and the dressing rooms were finished, of course, and it's lovely, but, but, um, there were a lot of corks moving into that space. It wasn't really a theater. Um, you know, it's a, it's a room made to this, you know, to be an events room too, but thank God our designers were knowledgeable enough to make it into a theater. Mm-hmm. They really worked hard. They, they, they tweak different things in that, in that space. And, um, you know, I was proud to say that, that, you know, we really made it a theater space. Mm-hmm. Three quarter, three quarter in, in the thrust configuration is what we picked, which I love. And it's different, you know, nobody had that configuration. And so it, it made a nice variety there at the center, but that was it. We just kept going, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and grew. There are setbacks in any company. Uh, it's very difficult to start a theater company from the ground up, especially a theater company, not starting a company, mm-hmm. a theater company, professional theater company, an equity yeah. theater company. A um, lot, lot to think about. And so, and then, you know, we're lucky to have people through the years come on board and, and lighten the load mm-hmm. for us, uh, which is what should happen. Yes. You know, uh, if anything's, if any, anything's going to grow. You know, mm-hmm. you have to pass things off, which I'm happy to do. Always, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yes, that's what you do. You there can do you this go. now. You can Thank do you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, all of a sudden, what you, know, you did at the beginning has turned into like 15 other people. Yeah. Well, I, mm-hmm. I, I wish it were that much, but it's. It, it, but I, I will say that that yes, the help is help, is, and to do that is imperative for a company, mm-hmm. or else you just. Nothing's going to happen. You sure. need to stay, and and you'll get burnt. You get burnt out. Yeah, you know, right? So that that's it, and that is the history in a nutshell yeah. of you know um, of how how it came to be, and and it's the company survived the pandemic, yeah, was, where, where some didn't, some did not. Yeah, that that was my my next question yeah. was that you know the vibrancy of live theater, <clears throat> it's just it, it's. People, you, their, them, your life. Mm-hmm. You're like a family for a moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. You're like in that same yes. personal space. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but COVID changed that for a few years, mm-hmm. didn't it? It did. And it's still, um, it's still, we're still, still, fight, having, still fighting it. Still fighting it. Still yeah. It really effect. did a number on, on the performing arts. Really did. Yeah. Uh, regional theaters closed across the country. Regional theaters that were well established are, are now gone, unfortunately. That is, um, it's devastating. It's devastating because it's less work for actors. Sure. Devastating because it's less theaters. Um, we, we survived. Uh, we, just, we, we just, um, that passion of making it happen. We just made things happen. We did concerts. We did these drive-in concerts outside where people drove their cars up and oh, yeah. could, could eat and drink and, and be outside. And, and we did concerts. We did Facebook live from our homes. That was pretty hilarious actually. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so each of us at our house and f- everybody figuring that out, that was a challenge, but we did it. Um, and I think the reason we did survive is because the th- three of us are performers. So we weren't, we, we were performing, mm. we were doing the performing and then we'd hire like a few other people to perform with us. Sure. Okay. A few other people, but we, we could, we could do it yeah. because we're performers. Right. So we weren't having to hire out all these people. Gotcha. There's three of us and we'd hire like one or two people to sing with us at sure. our concerts or to, you know, to be a guest at the, for the, for the Facebook live. So I, I do think that's a large reason why, why we did make it. Mm-hmm. And also everybody, the people that work for us now, you know, it was like our executive director, Jim Riley, he was a part of the Facebook live. He'd play the piano, you know, and, and Meg making that all happen, Meg Osborne making that happen and, and everybody pitching in Philip Peluso and, you know, 
um, helping with everything. It was everybody you have to come together. You have to, you got to come together and make it happen. Yeah. And, and all those, we, I, and we did, <clears throat> we did, but we're still struck. The pandemic did it. Like I said, did a number yeah. on life and, and we're still, everybody's still struggling. Unfortunately. Yeah. But it seems like more that people are able to, um, are more likely to come out. They are, it's but not the, like it was. It's still is another issue. Yeah, it's still the numbers are still a little, are still low. Gotcha. Yeah, they are. They gotcha. are. But uh, hopefully, <clears throat> we're just hoping. Uh, you just hope that will change and people start to come back to the theater. You know. Well, yeah. No, I hear you. Um, yeah. Well, Cynthia, what if you? What would be your advice in 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 light of this situation yeah. with coming back and 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 sort of overcoming <laughs> yeah. the yeah. you know the post pandemic yeah. um, for a young actress or a young actor yeah. who who wanted to who who's coming up? Um, and I think the pandemic hit everyone, even if the kids that were in, even if you you were a student in college, right? Because they had no classes, you know. So that 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 affected it affected everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Even if you were in college at the time of the pandemic, even if you weren't working professionally, you were still affected because your classes weren't happening and you weren't meeting face to face with right. your teachers. You weren't acting face to face. You were, you know, so um, in, I will say this, in this business, pandemic or no pandemic, right? Perseverance is the name of the game. Okay. You can be extremely talented, mm -hmm. right? That's this part portion of it. Here's your talent, sure. right? right? Here's your talent. That's great. Yay. You know, here's the other 100 people who can do what you do or more. 500 other women are going to be at that call with you, right? It's perseverance. It's sticking with it. Mm -hmm. It's keeping your chops up. It's constantly pushing yourself forward, learning new things, what can I do more? Do something for your profession every single day. Go to a dance class. Go to a vocal coaching. Go to an audition. Of course, go to an audition. Um, you know, if you're in a show, you're performing. So you're, you are doing something every day. But in between those gigs, you know, do something. Learn something new. Uh, ask someone, you know, can they, you know, ask Ask to assist someone with something, to mm -hmm. learn something new. Ask a director or choreographer to assist. Can I, you know, who you've worked with, can I ever be your assistant? That's what I did. You know, to learn, to learn more about yeah. this, what you can do in this field, mm -hmm. you know. Um, being a co-founder of a theater company taught me a lot of that too. It, sure. it, it taught us the education that the three of us received from starting this comp that company actor theater of indiana because i've i've backed away now from the company um is 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 priceless it's priceless you know even through all the hard times and, sure. and the, it's it's priceless so don't my advice would be don't and don't be scared of anything there's no fear there's no crying in baseball and there's no, there's no, you know, there's no. You are from the city, aren't there's you? There's no, yeah. No crying in baseball. There's no fear. <laughs> you can't. If you have uh, an inch of fear, if you have an inch of doubt, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be done. I see. You know, yeah. You gotta you gotta just put yourself out there. Yeah. And keep going. Like I said, perseverance. Perseverance. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. What, what do you have? What's coming up in the new season? Um. Well, I am. Uh. I. I. Last. My last season with ATI was last season. Yes. And I, I backed away as an artistic director, and so I, I am still helping with, you know, I'm still like helping the company. Or, or, I'm, what productions? Um, yeah, I'm. I'm going to be um, uh, directing and choreographing uh, Route 66. Okay, it's coming up in January, February, and I'll be in for Mid Broadway <clears throat> because that's a show that has. God, I think that's like the fourth time the company has done it. And my friend yeah. Billy Kimmel comes and directs it. Yes. And so um, so I'm going to be in that one. Gotcha. Uh, so I will be contracted as a, you know, just like any actor, I'll be contracted or just like any director, I'll be contracted with the company mm -hmm. with those, you know, as a con as a uh, independent uh, contractor. Um, but I'm, you know, I'll help. I'll help out when needed. I'm if I'm asked to do something, of, of course, I'll help out. I. I don't want just because I just because you back away from a company, you don't want it to fail. 
Sure. You know, so you're still in. So I, I help when I, when I'm asked to, and, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to do it. I just, um, I just, you know, I just, I'd had my time, you know, as with doing all the, all the many things that we had to do. And I, I'm, um, I'm a, a guest at Anderson University right now. Okay. Guest artist there. I'm directing Nonsense right now. We open okay. this week. And um, so it's a great, wonderful cast. These these uh, young women are superstars in the cast, I'm, I'm okay. happy to say. I'm very fortunate. They're making me look good. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's where, I, that's where I, what I'm doing. And I'm, and of course, I'm, I'm an actor, so I'm, I'm always auditioning and, you know. The next project, the next, right the next, the, the next gig. So you always got to be looking up. for that next gig, right? Well, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and we'll, we'll post that <clears throat> on the description in um, <clears throat> on the show. Okay. And so we'll have that up for you, oh, that's awesome. so that people can um, <clears throat> catch your shows and you. uh, look forward to that. Yeah. Last question. For yes. You. Um, and we've talked a bit about it. You've you've brought it up, but just your kind of wisdom. Well, I've... and being in theater, no, no, no. You is is the. Um, it's not really a heavy question, but it it can be. Okay. But it's it's really getting to the, because it's really when I listen to you, it's it's really where your heart, you really mm. joy is at. Yeah. As a closing question, can you tell us about what's that joy that, you know, some people say magic. It's the charm of live theater. Um, I I I have to tell you, I've worked in. You know, I've worked in film. I've worked in TV, um, and 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 you're you're you're. I'm very fortunate when I get those gigs. Or, you know, it's great. Um, but there's nothing like live. There's nothing like the performing arts. There's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like feeling that energy with the audience. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like, you know, having what you say that chemistry with an actor on stage. There's nothing. There's nothing better than being in that moment. You know, when you're in the pocket of something, we call it, this is how I say it, we call it when you're, when you're in that, when everything is going almost damn near perfect with a performance, you're in the pocket. It's like you're, you have, it's, it's, it's a different, it's almost a different realm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, when you're, when you are performing, when you're singing, especially for me, when I'm, when I'm singing, you know, um, you go somewhere else. I do. It's it's. There's the spiritual nothing. Spiritual like, connection. There's nothing like, like it. Yeah. There's it's nothing just, like you're it. Connected with those people. A lot of people say, you know, I'll go into the theater and that's my. Uh, in fact, Carol Channing said it. You know, she said I walked into the theater and that was my church. Oh really? Yeah. So there is kind of a higher power there mm-hmm. in theater. Um, and when you f- feel that, it's really there. Like I said, there's just nothing like it. And we're very fortunate to be in this business and to feel that because not many people, not many people have that. Yeah. They can't, they can't live and do what they love to do. And it's hard. It's a hard business. So when you have those moments, that's what just makes it even better. Sure. Well, your passion for that really comes out and that, that drive is what keeps you going. You just like, you love it so much and there's so much you can do. Well, that's it for this week's episode of The Omnibus Show. This week's guest was Cynthia Collins, actor and co-founder of the Actors Theater of Indiana. We're shooting from Feinstein's today. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Hotel Carmichael, and we look forward to being with you in our next episode of The Omnibus Show. If you enjoyed this program, Please like, share and subscribe to continue the conversation. For the Omnibus Show newsletter, please sign up at theomnibusshow.com.